Well, I gave a review of uh, the current status of research on the anti-diabetic drug metformin in terms of uh, repurposing it for applications in oncology. And we drew a distinction between uh, uh, using the drug for prevention and using the drug for um, treatment of existing cancers. And the take-home message is that um, really we have lots of rationale for suspecting that metformin might have utility, but we have very little data to actually demonstrate that. So it's best regarded as research in progress. Uh, and even though uh, many people have strong opinions on this uh, subject, some people believing that metformin should be almost put in the drinking water because it's so obviously useful, and other people having the opposite view, saying that this is just kind of an epiphenomenon, that uh, it has something in mice but is really clinically irrelevant. Neither of those extremes, in my view, accurately reflects the current state of research where uh, we, in fact, have uh, some un unanswered questions. And answers to these questions will, uh, uh, you know, are expected within the next uh, few years. question of why metformin ever came to be studied in the, by oncologists probably relates mainly to pharmacoepidemiology studies that were carried out about a decade ago where diabetologists were just interested in um, reviewing their records and seeing how their patients were dying. And uh, some died of uh, heart attacks and some died of strokes and some died of cancer. And uh, in reviewing their records, they found in some cases, in some uh, highly cited studies, that uh, fewer diabetic patients were dying of cancer than expected if their diabetes was treated with metformin. So that's what got the um, um, issue on the scientific agenda. Uh, it got even higher on the scientific agenda when laboratory studies uh, with metformin appeared to show that metformin was um, slowing the growth of cancer cells in laboratories and it appeared at one point maybe eight to ten years ago that we had strong evidence both from the laboratory and from uh, retrospective uh, pharmacoepidemiology that metformin really ha showed a lot of promise. Uh, but since that time as is often the case with research, we've recognized it's much more complicated. And uh, in the case of the uh, retrospective pharmacoepidemiology studies, those were initially um, taken as, as very strong evidence, but there have been now, with more time going by, other studies that failed to replicate those uh, initial exciting results, uh, showing that diabetics treated with, di with uh, metformin had less cancer. And there have been statistical arguments mm, indicating that maybe some of the exciting studies were statistically flawed. So that the population evidence from these retrospective studies is now regarded by most experts as highly controversial uh, rather than proving a point. I don't mean to imply that uh, we're certain that the uh, opinion of, oh, that the controversies were resolved and that the pharmacoepi studies uh, prove no association. Rather, we now have gone from an earlier stage where the association was thought to be very real and very interesting to the current state of affairs where the population evidence is now regarded as controversial and a recognition that we need prospective clinical trials to really sort it out in terms of um, efficacy. Uh, and in terms of the laboratory studies, these laboratory studies, in contrast, are very reproducible. Um, some of the effect sizes are large and easy to replicate, and they have been replicated around the world. But there, there's been different discussions having to do with the exposure levels and dosing levels. Are those interesting doses that always seem to work in mice, uh, in certain mice models, uh, are those doses really the doses that are relevant for, for humans? And that's also been a point of some discussion. So that really, uh, if we put it all together, metformin is a very interesting um, agent. It certainly works for diabetes. Uh, and uh, I would have to summarize now that it remains very active uh, in, in terms of a cancer research topic, but we don't have definite answers. And it really fits into a more general interest um, or research theme in oncology, which is oncology um, uh, metabolism 
and um, uh, this is, uh, you know, metformin research represents a small part of overall cancer metabolism research because we do recognize that metformin works fundamentally by inhibiting oxidative phosphorylation or the burning of carbohydrate fuels uh, to create energy. And th that mechanism is, is, is very appealing because we know that cancers have a high need for, um, uh, you know, they're, they're vulnerable to um, strategies that deprive them of the energy that they need. The whole agenda for metformin itself is can this anti-diabetic drug be repurposed for either cancer treatment or cancer prevention? And I feel that that question is unanswered, uh, but there's intensive research. There's another area of research that uh, deserves mention, which is the synthesis of uh, analogs of metformin that are specifically designed to be anti-neoplastic agents because they're, they, they affect energy metabolism in a way that's more potent than the effects of metformin. And several pharmaceutical companies are now um, exploring uh, that area, synthesizing new drug candidates based on the structure of metformin, that is new biguanides, and uh, these uh, may be um, taken towards clinical trials. Some of those might be a little bit more toxic than metformin itself, uh, uh, but may be much more efficacious. And that agenda is, I would emphasize, for cancer treatment, not for cancer prevention. Uh, for cancer prevention, you need an agent that has absolutely demonstrated safety because you're giving a drug to healthy people. So uh, for cancer prevention, the agenda is metformin itself. For cancer treatment, uh, we may be able to have more potent versions of metformin and hope that their toxicity uh, I is such that uh, uh, they'll find that sweet spot where the toxicity will be ac uh, acceptable but the efficacy may be better than metformin. Prevention is a very um, difficult, it, it's a harder job uh, to do research in the prevention field than it is in the treatment field, chiefly because obviously if you have a cancer patient and you have a new agent, uh, it's quite easy to determine whether it works. You just have to wait a few weeks or months of treatment and either you're pleased or you're displeased. If your goal is to prevent, you actually have to study populations over many years or decades to determine whether a given intervention has worked. So at the meeting here, we have not really heard about any breakthroughs, and I think that that is the reason that it just, uh, one needs to have a lot of patience to work in the field of, of cancer prevention. Despite the challenges of, uh, the methodological challenges of working in prevention where timelines have to be so long before you can draw conclusions, I feel that prevention research is absolutely essential because of the state of the art of treatment research. Cancer treatment, even with our best, newest treatments, uh, tends to be less effective than we would like and more expensive than we'd want. So that notwithstanding the challenges, cancer prevention research um, has to be part of the overall uh, cancer control um, strategy uh, because if even at a pessimistic view, a quarter of cancers could be prevented, um, and some people would argue it's closer to 50%, but even if it's only a quarter of cancers that could be prevented, uh, we have to do that so that, uh, so that our treatment facilities, um, you know, have uh, less to work on and, uh, or fewer patients to see. Because if, especially if you take a global perspective, uh, the rates of increase of cancer uh, on a global basis are frightening and we still really don't have um, uh, cheap and effective treatment mechanisms that would be usable in many of the countries that are facing upcoming um, upticks in cancer incidents. So uh, despite the challenges of cancer prevention, uh, we feel we have to strongly push the envelope there and, and do as much as we can. Thank <laughs> you.